Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Did you see the environmental DNA studies where scientists are using genomics for biodiversity monitoring? How is that different from metagenomics? Well, environmental DNA refers to genetic material obtained directly from environmental samples. For example, soil, sediment, water, etc., without any obvious signs of biological source material. This could in also include large organisms. For example, aquatic organisms shed biological materials containing DNA into their environments. Things like scales, epithelial cells, slime coats, uh, waste, of course, and uh, of course, when they decompose. Um, this environmental DNA, or eDNA, or Edna, if to her friends, can persist in aquatic environments for extended periods, up to 30 days. All conservation efforts to save biodiversity depend on the monitoring of species and populations to obtain reliable distribution patterns and population size estimates. Such monitoring has traditionally relied on physical identification of species by visual surveys and counting of individuals. However, traditional monitoring techniques remain problematic due to difficulties associated with correct identification of cryptic species or juvenile life stages, non-standardized sampling, and the invasive nature of some survey techniques. Yes, surveys can be very invasive. Sometimes it seems they have to destroy the environment to try and save it. For example, to survey earthworms, squares are soaked with allele isothiocyanate. The earthworms are collected on the surface and or dug up. They are then hand sorted and morphologically identified. Bansu et al. developed a non-invasive approach where they isolated and sequenced extracellular DNA from soil cores. This approach allowed an efficient detection of earthworm diversity and highlighted a significant land use effect on the distribution patterns of earthworms that was not revealed by the classical survey. Another role for eDNA is in the surveillance of invasive species. For surveillance, you know what you are looking for, so it is easy to develop genomic markers. For example, Farrington et al. sequenced mitochondria to develop markers for hypothalmicthus, nobilis, and H. molictrix to screen for invasive Asian carp. There seems to be no end for the applications of genomics. And on that fishy note, we will have to wrap up for today. Feel free to reach out to us with questions, thoughts, suggestions, or any concerns or feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, bye. Bye.